Hello and welcome to an original Retry This production. Today I'll be teaching you about the basic aspects of a two-player game in Game Maker. You can make a two-player game on Game Maker Lite or Pro, it doesn't really matter. So, to have a two-player game, you obviously need to have two players at least. That's a given. You need two sprites and the basic things. What you also need to have, though, which is very important, is two different control schemes. Now, the most common control scheme for many games would be the arrow keys. The left arrow key, up arrow key, down arrow key, and right arrow key. And so, that's a very common control scheme. So what I have, I have two different players. Let's just drag these players out. Uh, object blue player and object black player. Uh, so object black player, let's see him as player one. His control scheme is, ba is the basic left, up, right. The down arrow key will be added in a later tutorial for crouching and stuff like that. So I guess basic actions that make him a platformer character using the left, up, right arrow keys. So he's just a basic player, my original player. And then we have blue player right here who uses a separate control scheme. The, mo the second most common control scheme in computer games would be the WASD. So, what I did, I used the WASD. The C key is just this. I should have moved it. But I used WASD. Except the S. I didn't use the S yet. But WASD is the second most common control scheme for two multiplayer games. So W would be the jump, which is the same as up. W would be equal to up. Right, the right arrow key would be equal to the D key. The A, arrow, the A letter would be equal to the left. And so it's a very common control scheme. You want to make sure the buttons are close together so your, pe so your players don't, don't struggle trying to reach over the side of the screen. And so my player, he has all the basic actions, but because um, I used a different control scheme for him, I couldn't make them parents. Parents are really handy because they make an object inherit another object's events. So, if I made him a parent to object black player, I could probably delete like half the stuff because he would automatically inherit all of these events that aren't changed. So, but since I have a, a completely different control scheme that's not even relatively close, I had to make them separate objects. But yeah, so that's the basic aspect of a two-player game. Parents can make your game much easier. It depends, all depends on how you create your parents and objects. So let me just show you what a two-player game would look like, a good one. Well, not a good one, but a basic one. Okay, so here we have my two players. We have black player, who's on his own, and blue player, who's on his own. So when a black player, let's say, jumps into the water, he can do it. He can do everything. Blue player can jump on top of him. Same thing. They don't have a collision with each other, so... Well, I didn't see that coming. <laughs> well, because they don't have a collision with each other, he's not touching anything. He's touching something, so they have super movement. That's cool. But in any case, that's the basic aspect of a two-player game. I should have gave them a collision with each other. I should have gave them a collision with each other to avoid this problem, but I didn't. But that's actually a very handy um, co-op feature to have extra jump just because your player's touching the other player. Like super players. They have super abilities when they touch each other, so that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. What? That's the basic aspect of a two-player game. Uh, this has been an original. We try this production. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe.